Land acknowledgements are often presented in shared spaces where we gather in person. But on a podcast, we recognize that each one of us occupies space on Indigenous land. We call on you, our listeners, to acknowledge that Indigenous people are the original inhabitants and caretakers of this land and have distinctive and sovereign rights and responsibilities that are directly connected to the land, community, culture, and knowledge. With this in mind, please take time to find out what territory you are on at native-land.ca and support our amazing Indigenous firecrackers in the world, like Cree author Wanda Kihuwin. She's a prolific author who has just released a new book called Seven Sacred Truths. Go find out more about Wanda at wandakihuwin.com. everyone, I'm Naomi Smigas. And I'm Amanda Brugel. And this is The Blaze Sessions. Um, Amanda, this is so fun. I just love, I love that I get, you're busy. You're a busy person. That's you're all busy there is too. to it. Yeah, but like, I get you for this little chunk of time. And um, what I wanted to say, as I woke up this morning, uh, my friend Krista staying with us and she sent me the noms for the CSAs. And guess whose name was on the CSAs? Yours. <laughs> <gasps> yeah thank you thank you it's really what exciting is, is it like you've been nominated a, a thousand and one times yep a and won a million in time and mm -hmm. six times mm -hmm. but like what is it like does it matter to you that's what I really want to know no <laughs> it, I mean <laughs> I really want to know is it like your first thought what am I going to wear or is your first thought like oh I don't know. Like, what does it do for you? Usually what I'm going to wear, but because you know how much I love clothes and I, I, it's just really an opportunity. And especially at an award ceremony, it's an opportunity to just go my, like my princess dreams, extravaganza and be obnoxious. That's, I love that. But I will tell you that this year, um, I, I was nominated, I've been nominated like five times in the past three years, which is very exciting. Not as many nominations as our guest. However, nice, um, nice segue. Yeah, we're going to get it, there. See it? hear it um but uh it, i won on my couch by myself like my kids weren't here and my partner was working and so I, it was exciting to win my first csa but i won in my own home on my couch in a bathing suit cover-up and then the following year i was working on set and some grip was like you want a thing and so the idea to be surrounded by peers yeah. and win or lose and just after we've been separated for so long i know that it sounds cliche but just no. the idea that we get to celebrate together in a room with actors and directors and artists that's what I'm I genuinely am excited about that I know I feel like this year it's going to be extra special like that is I I feel like if they could truncate the awards and be like boom 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 nomination award nominate because people just want to see each other yeah yes and yes, hug this, and all the things yeah I love to I love being messy at those things and I don't mean drunk but I love being messy that mm, and it's poor, I, we know as the host it's so hard to like wrangle actors and they're talking but I do kind of love being bad that in between breaks or in between speeches that everyone jumps up at the tables and goes and runs and sees one another and yeah. like that's the kind I feel like we're all just kids being naughty which is I yeah. like that too I know there was something that somebody said once about like who do you want not want at the back of the room with you like I always think you and I get into trouble because like remember that auction we went giggling. to and we started like giggling like yes. I'm gonna cry I'm so like emotional yes. about everything right now um <laughs> but, <laughs> emotional nervous I don't know uh, uh, dry eye syndrome but we we were like ruining the auction because we were giggling so much about it all you wanted yeah. to bid on hubcaps I think I almost bought six thousand dollars <laughs> worth of hubcaps because of you so I love it though. It I love was it. for when... a cause. It was. It was. Yeah. Hey, speaking of cause, check this out. Yeah. Okay. We got we got a great day cause of this guest. Oh. Come on, that's good. We're gonna work. We're gonna work on them. Yeah. More. We're gonna work on them harder. Um. <laughs> can Can I tell you about our guest and why I chose this person? I love that you curated these guests for the Blaze sessions, and this is honestly these. This is somebody I've wanted to talk to forever. You mm -hmm. go. I'm like nuts nuts excited about talking to this person I, I can't even believe this person said yes to us so the whoever's listening so much get money. ready so much sit down because we paid them we oh. paid them we paid them so all right this person uh, her first appearance on stage was at toronto's elgin theater when she was only six years old 
She was a cheerleader who became a triple threat, who moved on to study with Uta Hagen, as you do, who eventually became an actor and a director and a choreographer. Her resume reads like a phone book, like it genu genuinely reads like a phone book. I was doing research last night and it was overwhelming. The credits include uh, Little Mosque on the Prairie, The Umbrella Academy, Orphan Black, Today's Special, okay, which calm is down, my child. Calm the heck down. <laughs> Emily of New Moon and the classic Canadian feature, I've Heard the Mermaid Singing. She has taught at both Humber College and the Canadian Film Centre. She is one of Canada's most decorated award-winningest actors, that is a fact, having won uh, and been nominated for countless film and then television and theatre awards, including her most recent SAG Award nomination for Outstanding Performance by a Cast for Women Talking. Come on. She is funny Let's and powerful and any effervescent longer. and clever and truly an icon in our industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheila McCarthy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, here I am. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh my God. McCarthy. Honestly, well, right goodness. back at you. I'm taking the fee that you're paying me for this and going to winners right after I Oh my finish. God. They they will put you in jail because I'm not giving you any money. So that means you're stealing something. <laughs> I Listen, I, I'm so, I don't even know where we were. I was looking over our, our notes and researching it last night. I'm like, oh my gosh, you've been in my mind for so long before we even met, before we like hung out at Deb's house over cocktails and things like that. Um, like early days from I heard the mermaid singing because my mother would be like, that's what you should be doing that's what you should be doing is that kind of movie. I'm like, oh, it's so easy. And then I was like, why did that impact me so much? And I think it was because all like in a time where everybody was cute little bobs, Sheila McCarthy comes out with red hair and you were just doing <laughs> things on your own terms. And I freaking love that so much. And I want to, I want to go back to like the time where you were studying with Uta Hagen because I feel like that must have, like, what I'm curious about is that that time in your life in New York, and then how, what what are you still holding on to? What are things that you studied with her and are still like, yep, that's an Uta Hagen thing? Um, just before you, before I answer that question, I just have to say that my father always used to say to me, Wendy Cruz, and she's in everything. What's wrong with She's you? coming up yeah. on our show too. She's going to okay. be one of our guests. I know. There's you make sure you like, tell her that. I will. That's so funny. I think her mother said the same thing about me. Um, oh. You know, when I got into Udo Hagen's class, I'd really just been um, a dancer at, at the Charlottetown Festival. I hadn't really opened my mouth very much. And I remember auditioning for her and I did a, a, a monologue from 10 Lost Years, this beautiful Canadian play. And I was trying to light a cigarette. I was so friggin' nervous. I couldn't get it lit. But I, and she knew I was a dancer and she loved working with dancers. So here's the thing about Uta Hawkins. She's very practical. You learn how to act like a plumber learns how to plumb. And that spoke to me because it wasn't method. It wasn't, you know, you don't have to kill your mother to have played killing your mother. It was more practical. And as a dancer doing plies every day, that spoke to me. Right. And so she really, it, a great influence on me. And because it seemed like no big deal working with her. And then it was a big deal. Yeah. I, I love that. You know what I mean? Like it took the pressure off those big emotional moments because you were busy with props and I love props. So it just was, um, she unlocked things for me um, through a practical way that mm -hmm. unlocked an emotional life for me and that spoke to me so oh, I still God, that's gorgeous that's gorgeous I know that you you spent uh, obviously with Uda, a stint in New York and you're doing theater can I ask what what was the step or what was the introduction the the introduction into the film world for you especially being mm -hmm. a dancer and not being used to speaking well, it's funny, I, I worked with Udo Hagen for a year and then I came back and did nothing but musicals for ah. a while. And then um, I really wanted to break into film and TV. So I took a TV course with Ann Tate and saw all the weird, <laughs> you know, and I think my first real TV gig was The Littlest Hobo. Oh. I played a, a little maid in a Littlest Hobo arc. And actually, as a result of playing that, I made I um which was a hoot you couldn't look at the dogs you know it was right oh, I didn't know what I was doing Patricia Rosema saw that <gasps> she looked at that the videos and thought oh I should audition her for 
for I've heard the mermaids singing. So, um, and you know, a couple of other CBC things, you know, how we all kind of cut our teeth on little parts and, and some commercials and, you know, yeah, uh, dubbing. I was voice dubbing mm -hmm. for a while. Um, but, but uh, sort of still trying to break into straight theater too. At the same so time. did you find like, so, okay, tell me how this works with your brain, because sometimes I like, I, I'm studying in a studio now and the, the challenge for me is taking what you're learning. So you take Uta Hagen, you've gone from this intensive New York time, and then you're on a mm -hmm. set for Little as Hobo and like, no, no mm -hmm. shade, but that's a different mindset as far as yeah. artistic I don't even know, artistic invention goes? Like, how did you switch your brain and try to infuse what you took from Uta Hagen into the world of something like Lilith's Oh Hobo? boy, that's a, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure I did. Like I, I, my theory about acting has always been you use those tools when you need them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you don't like, just go for it. And it was Martha McIsaac and Emily of New Moon taught me that the greatest lesson ever. She was being interviewed by Sid Edelman, who said, oh, my God, you're working with this, all these luminaries. What are you going to do? And she said, I'm just going to pretend. And he <sighs> said, well, that's very well and good, but you're working with Michael Moriarty and, you know, Phyllis Diller and like crazy people. And she said, I'm just going to pretend. She was oh, 11. And he said, well, okay, but, and she finally got mad and said, I'm just going to pretend. <laughs> and I've never, that was right. probably even better than a year with Uta Hagen for me. I've never forgotten that, mm -hmm. you know. You are making me, her, you're making me second guess every choice I've ever made as an actor right now, because uh, it's just, it's so simple uh, and beautiful though, and yeah, true. It is, and it is. It is and it isn't. And there's certain right. times when you do call upon things and you think you're blocking and it's hard and you think, what? why is that one line? Why is that one word not going into my brain? Like yeah. that happens to me all the time. And there's always a reason for it, you know. Um, but, you know, I try and I think, oh, it's so hard to remember this, but after doing it for so long, but I try to remember that it's we're just playing. I mean, aren't we mm. lucky? Oh my God, you're so lucky. I mean, when I get to, I think on the Littles Tobo, I was too stupid to worry. I was just so thrilled. <laughs> Dude, but I like, was, and I was kind of, kind of pissed off that the dogs were getting all the attention. <laughs> <laughs> dogs and babies. I, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, it's, I've always done really good work when an understudy's been on stage. Because when an understudy's on stage, you're off yourself, yeah. you're worried about the other person and you take care of them and then you probably do your best shows ever, so. Absolutely. It's so true. We get so wrapped that. up in our own stuff that it's like, if yeah. I can just concentrate on making my part, my scene partner, like have a you great know. time. Did you learn that from somebody specifically or was there a story oh, well, I, that you're I, like, oh. A lot. I, yeah. yeah, a lot from the wonderful Brent Carver, a lot from the incredible oh, Robin Phillips, who really taught me so much. But, um, you know, I mean, I teach this stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm always going, it's so much easier to teach than to do. <laughs> to do. You know. Sorry, yeah. You know. Yeah. It yeah. seems and like, also, to, sorry to, to cut you off, it seems to me that you've never, ever, ever stopped working and like that that starts from Stratford oh. to New York back to dance and all the way up to, and then little oh. little mosque which was little mosque was the first to me of its kind that type of show in Canada like what do you think specifically it is about you or what is your secret that has allowed you to have this career that has allowed you to keep working in Canada this long Okay, FYI, I haven't worked since last August. I know, this is the illusion, right? You this know, is this that, wild listen, illusion. That is, but I'll tell you, I think the joy of living in Canada, and you guys will share this, is that is that we don't get as pigeonholed. Um, we don't have our vaudeville hook. I remember Marty Short said once, you know, you go to LA, you get that hook, you get that one part, and that's what they want you to do. And if you're not doing that, you're probably not working your gardening. So in Canada, in order to make a living and to, and of course I, I get bored easily. And I, I also, you know, stop loving being on stage. So I have to direct, I love to work. So I think I try to jump around the mediums as much as I can and reinvent myself as much as I can. But listen, you guys, let's not be fooled. It's smoke and mirrors. I have spent years not working. And, <laughs> you know, I always tell students if you can think of anything else to do, 
do it. But right. um, somehow I have survived through the decades. I mean, Little Moss happened when I turned 50. And that yeah. was such a surprise and such a gift. Like most of my friends were hanging up their tap shoes then going, mm-hmm. oh my God, I'm never going to, you know, office temping. And, and you know, so I, um, I don't know. I think my parents were great and my, you know, they were very supportive. And But my father always instigated this work ethic in me and also this sort of negative negative attitude that you better work hard because it's not going to last and my brother and I my brother who's a composer in LA we've both fought against that for years going fuck you <laughs> we're yeah you know we're gonna keep going but keep you know we yeah and I love it still yeah I mean I love it still and I try not to get in my own way and um I mean, what do you I mean by that? that? I hear that phrase all the time. Like, why can't, like, Naomi would be great if she could get out of her own way. Like, what does it mean for you? I mean, I have multiple personalities. So, I mean, like, I do not. Yes, you do. We'll, we'll finish that later. <laughs> but what does it oh, mean for God. you? In, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. My years in Stratford, when I was, you know, doing the odd season at the Stratford Festival, I used to get in my own way a lot. And it created a lot of nerves. Like, I, I actually got, like, terrible stage fright. And I really... <gasps> Who that was, you know, I totally understand that. I understand students' fear and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I operate from a place of that. I think, and I think an actor should. Like, I think sometimes I think, oh, I'm not really Teflon enough to be doing yeah. what I'm doing. At the same time, I think what I can do is walk that line of, of being terrified. I think I go from terror to boredom. And there's really <laughs> not a whole lot in between. Mm. Like it's seriously <laughs> like at, seasons in Stratford, Tara opening night, mm-hmm. complete boredom. boredom. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how I that's how I roll. <laughs> Spe- speaking of terror, I have a question for you about screen testing. I know you screen tested for uh, Field of Dreams and uh, Grace Under Fire. Uh, yes. those opportunities. This is a question because I have screen tested for uh, 14 projects and I got them and they all, the pilots didn't get picked up. And then I quit the business for four years because it destroyed me so much. So my question mm-hmm. to you is, do you think that not getting those, were you impacted by not getting those after they came out and after you saw what they were, did it hurt you? Oh my God, Field of Dreams. I still have that 3 a.m oh, what would have happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it wasn't mid soon enough. And I, you know, that was, I, of course, and at the time I had done Mermaids. I went to LA. I was going to be the next Meryl Streep. I, when mm-hmm. I tested for dreams, my daughter Mackie was literally five days old. Oh and, and Kevin, I got to test with Kevin Costner. He was so sexy and so incredible. And I remember being so f- nervous. And he said, is there anything I can do to help you? And I was like, oh my God, just marry me or kiss me. <laughs> like, oh was, he was so unbelievable. Oh. But I expected to get it. I yes. expected to get everything. Yeah. And so when I didn't get Grace Under Fire and I didn't get 500 things I auditioned for, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I mean, it was slightly arrogant of me to be thinking that. We're but all like that. I, like, that's a, that's, I think you need that. They, yeah. Don't they understand who I am? Don't they, don't they get it? And then I realized like, oh my gosh, how terrifying it is in California and how, yeah. you know, uh, you know, my managers after a couple of years said bye-bye and that was so devastating to me it killed me um but you know you gotta take the punches you gotta take your 24 hours of mourning it but you know for sure field of dreams stays in my yeah. brain how did you know, how, how did you things. how did you pick yourself back back yeah, up? that like, was my question too yes how because do you think how do you at this we're good at like the success i don't know okay. i think i i think i came okay. back here um, and I think I had a movie to go to. Uh, I mean, I just, you know, I, time, time is the healer, like time. And, you know, some, who was it? Ingrid Bergman said, happiness is good health and a short memory. And I really, <laughs> that's right. Amazing. It's a good one. Yeah. Right. I love that. And so, you know, you have either or quit. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or, or quit. but that wasn't an option for you. you. 
Like, was that ever like, what did you well, ever think that? I, I don't have anything else to do. I don't know what else I could clean I houses. Like, honestly, I really don't know what else I would do. Yeah. I, I guess that's why I started teaching. But no, I started teaching because Little Mosque ate up three months of my life. And I'm going, well, what am I going to do for the other nine months? Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. sitting around bonbons. Mm -hmm. um, I have to hit the ground running every day of my life. So, you know, um, uh, I don't know. I just kept going. Yeah. And, and but there, you know, the amount of stuff you don't get, you guys know. It's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. is this illusion of, of all of us. I know. Oh, yes. I have a oh, waste paper basket that's overflowing with sides of auditions. Oh, God. The, like I didn't I know. get. And I, ha I, I had to like, did you, you know. switch your thinking though? Like, was there a time? Because I, I understand that feeling of like, but why don't I get everything? Why aren't I be well, like, you know, I'm going through that right mind? now. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I'm, I, I am going through that right now because I think women talking, um, I, you know, everyone's telling me, you know, oh my God, you're going to, you hello, nothing. I mean, I have a call back for a TV series shooting in Montreal on Friday. And, you know, I think, why aren't they just giving it to me? Yeah. I mean, you got, yes. And that's still, all yes. our ego, right? That's I'm the ego stuff. Yeah, it's. Yeah, and it's like the superior inferior thing that mm -hmm. goes on in our brain mm -hmm. that we feel like, oh my God, we should. And you think there's no ever getting there, there. Like women talking has been an incredible platform for me. And, uh, you know, and we shall see. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, and you I know, don't you just go, this is it. maybe this is it. Maybe this is you it. Know? Yeah. But when you get I, to the top, then you'll be like, now what? Yeah. Right. There's also I mean, that like thing. So picture. you get the Oscar, yeah. you get the things that you think you dream about, <laughs> and then you're standing there going, "Oh, what? What? This is it." Yeah. Yeah. That's I true. Know. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I. I there's the, it's the expectation of people too. Other people who just go, "Oh my God, Sheila," and I just go, "Well." Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I get, to do no. What I was going to say is I, I I agree with you, and I do think it's always going to be like this that it's always going to be a hustle it's always going to be a grind even for actors that aren't working actors it's still a grind and even for I'm sure it's like this with you my really famous friends it's even like that for them or they they didn't get the Marvel movie or they didn't get the franchise it's the same thing yeah. however I will say this will lead me to my point I do think it's different in this country I think it's much harder in this country I think that there is a certain level in the states in Britain even in Australia that when you get to as an artist that you don't sort of dip below that that there's a mm -hmm. standard there and I feel for here I do feel like we our memories are short for a lot of our artists and a lot of our icons mm -hmm. where it, you just are sort of thrown to the wayside there's not enough of a star system here to make it sustainable to allow people to remember so I think it's a bit mm -hmm. different here I think it's hard yeah I mean my agent said to me recently you're not doing hallmarks anymore for scale and a half and I went yes oh, I'm not well, no okay um but it is still that same thing of going to the states making it big having your ticket there I mean the three of us haven't moved there I mean I've spent lots of time there and I'm I've got the managers there again and they're very excited you know, to have me down there, which is great. I, I, you know, I'm not cynical about it. I have been cynical about it here. And that is why I went down there too. You know, I mean, because uh, the possibility, they, they made you feel that the possibility was mm -hmm. bottomless and that it was, you know, good. And then it's, and then it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but God, do you find that like, I, I do want to hear about like the mindset change. Cause I think that you can't have a career as long as you have had without examining and facing those kind of uh like the lack of legacy that we think we are the lack of legendary status that we think we are like I lived mm. in Los Angeles for yeah. five years mm. thinking exactly what you just said which is the possibilities it's there's so many possibilities mm. and what I came up with is that possibilities and art were two separate things mm -hmm. and yeah. that was the thing yes. that shocked me so did you have mm -hmm. to change your mindset in order to get back on track with having the career that you have right now and that you want. Yeah. And it's what I tell students all the time. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't sit by the phone. And I continually learn that lesson right. even now that I'm waiting and you think, what are you waiting for? So yes. I write, I write every day with my co-writer. I 
try to be proactive. And uh, yeah, it's high and low and still. So, um, but, you know, the disappointment of, of, of not getting those things right away is, is huge, isn't it? I mean, because, mm. I mean, when somebody gets a part now, I still go, really? They got uh -huh. that? <laughs> How come I didn't get cast Wendy, as the tall black man? Wendy Cruson got that <laughs> again. <laughs> I can but do people, anything. People, I know, but people would feel the same way. And then I look in the mirror and I go, oh my God, I'm 67. I'm an old bird. Mm, I'm, no. you know, no, but you know, uh, uh, I just, ah, uh, there's no answer for it. You just, I just keep going. I just yeah. keep going. And, and, I, and I, uh, you know, I have great friends and family who support me and try and just pick your, pick myself up and keep mm -hmm. going. What yeah. what else can we do? But I yeah, totally yeah. agree about the Canadian thing. It makes me crazy. Um, you know, uh, you know, Veronica Tennant said to me recently, she said, she said, you don't have the order of Canada. And I went, no, no. And she said, what, what is wrong? And I said, well, huh? I don't know. Um, Should I write a letter and say, dear Canada, what's wrong with you? I don't have it. <laughs> I believe no. you mis mistaken me for somebody else and you should be have given me the order of Canada. I mean, yeah, but you can spend the time doing that or you can spend your time writing. Writing. And you know what? That's what I love to do. I, yeah. During COVID, I wrote with my co-writer, co Carol, who's an ex-school teacher, and we've been writing for three years. We have five seasons. No one will ever see it, but it's <laughs> where my, it's my happy place. And I someday I will show it to somebody, but you know, when you're writing and no one's seen it and it's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, that <laughs> makes me <laughs> happy. <laughs> Can yeah, I ask um, you, yeah. what does Sheila McCarthy write? Is it comedy? Is it drama? Is it, is a murder mystery? What is it? Because she can do it's anything. anything. Is it a musical, oh, but a God. comedy, drama, murder mystery? Yeah. No, I'll tell you exactly. It's called Karen Die, and it's about two women who are invisible to the world, who hate the week between Christmas and New Year's. So they run away every year and nobody notices. And their oh. friendship now is exactly the same as when they were eight, because we don't really change. And it's what we say, it's what women say to each other when no one's listening. So that's that's the that's it in a nutshell. And it's funny and it's black and it's death and it's life and it's marriage and it's friendship and it's all those things. So it's so is it like invisible it. because of aging? Is that why they're invisible? Yeah, it's like, you know, you walk into a store and even when they were eight, nobody noticed them. And they certainly don't notice them now, which means mm. you observe the world and get away with murder literally so Ooh, it's fun fantastic dropping teasers yeah. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> there there's my first pitch you there guys you are the first. i mean i'd like to invest i have no problems <laughs> <laughs> great then do so you find, there you like, go that, is that something that you know i don't want to focus on aging because i don't well i mean i do mm -hmm. and i don't but i'm so curious because we are all aging thank goodness because the other option is not great so I would love to hear your perspective about that, especially, you know, having put a toe into Los Angeles and America, how do you process the, the, the process? Well, you? you know, listen, I'll tell you this one. The first time I saw women talking, I was like, dear God. Okay. Judith, Judy, Ivy, Judith, Ivy, and I both went, wow, we are getting so glammed up for the red carpet. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I thought the same thing. I looked at you and I went, her ego, your vanity is in check because you did not look how you look right now, which is gorge and glam. Oh, but you I look love your it. character is supposed to look. I love it. I know. I love no, no. And I, tale because, you know, I know. It's just when you see something for the first time, all you do is look at yourself and the lack of yeah. chins or whatever it is. And not you two, but me. And yeah, me I uh, loved it. I, then I'd, I've grown to love it because I do love it. I, you know, somebody emailed me the other day and said that I look like Irene Dunn, not Irene Dunn, Irene Ryan, the granny in the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh and I'm my like, God. Oh, you might, you might I mean, not. Thank you. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. And she was probably 48 when she played her right, part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> probably 32. That's right. So, That's right. Oh, God. No, you know what? Every year I sat down on the makeup chair of Little Mosque and went, oh my God, I forgot to have Botox. I'm so sorry. Mm. I'm so sorry. And then the world comes out in the white and they dressed me in white. But you know what? It's not my thing. And I would not have gotten Sarah's movie had I had yeah. enhanced. Yeah. And it's way too late. It's way too late for that now. So <laughs> 
I don't, I mean, I think it makes me unique down there. I think it makes me, and I look at the people who I really love, like Annette Benning or Laura Linney oh, or, love, yes. you know, those faces, Tony Collette, I saw recently, I thought, wow, good for her, you know, and those women, and you think you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I worked with Sally once and she said, no, I have to do it. And like, well, you don't, but I mean, if it makes you feel good, yeah. Not even so, even know. Sally Field really felt the pressure of having to really. Yeah. 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 And she was the first person, you know, I did a mini series with her and she was great. And she said, Sheila, you must reinvent yourself every five years. That's what it's going to be. And look at her career. Like she has done that. But, you know, I, this is my thing about plastic surgery and aging. It doesn't really make you look younger like if that's the dream mm -hmm. it to me it makes you look like you've had plastic surgery yeah. I, and and I I I don't know this anyway it's not I never was dependent on getting those parts as a beautiful woman I never even as a little girl my first role was the wicked witch like I, I never was that pretty thing mm. so I have never really dependent on that you know mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that's harder I think but I I look around now and I look at the faces on camera and I think wow it's changed so much and it's so great it's yeah. so everyone looks so different and beautiful and what whoever they are an individual and unique and diverse yeah. and all those things and you know what yay mm -hmm. yeah that's a, was a, a question that I wanted to ask you starting at the, the littlest hobo and just set culture and what that was like you were so young and it was your first just coming off of being a you know a, a dancer and a theater performer um which aren't different but the the culture around the sets are very different in my opinion um so what do you notice what is the the biggest difference you've noticed on sets from like the little hobo to the women talking um hours uh, how women are treated crews how we speak to one another all of that it's slow. Mm. He, women talking was a rare mm -hmm. bird because Sarah wouldn't do the movie unless she could put her children to sleep, which meant we had 3, 3 a.m. makeup calls, dear God. However, you know, the care on that set was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I have been on sets in the last two years where it's still not the case, yeah. where women were still being treated badly. So with the female director. So, you know, it is that the, it hasn't changed entirely. Um, Littlest Hobo, I don't really remember specifically. I do remember doing a movie of the week for CBC where I was encouraged to, you know, be more sexual than I had agreed to. And actually I hadn't agreed to anything. Mm. So I was put in that only once in my career in that horrible position of feeling prudish and wrong mm. and guilty not doing what I had not agreed to do. And boy, that would not happen now if I was on set. Um, but, you know, and I think that it that that world has changed and it's evolving and, you know, there's all the coaches on set now to make sure um, maybe the pendulum is swinging too far and I think it will come back because I still, still think that sex scenes should be allowed. Like I think there was this thing last week saying that there should be no more sex scenes on. I know. Like, what? I know. What? Um, so I think everybody needs to be protected. And I, I put men in that group too, men and women. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But for sure, women and not, women talking was an anomaly. And, and you just think, wow, it, I hope it could always be like this. And that wasn't just women on set. That was everybody being mm -hmm. sensitive to, really? to the subject and to everybody. Yeah. When you, um, I want to hear a little bit about the process, like the process of you going into your character and women talking, is it the same process that you always do for all your, your work or did you approach this differently? Well, I've, um, I zoomed with Sarah Polly first for two hours and that was really where the groundwork got laid really. Yeah. Um, and she, she kept apologizing. She said, well, you have to be approved by Brad Pitt. And I went, oh, okay, I'm good. Who doesn't that. have like, to be approved I'm, by Brad Pitt? <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Um, but it was, we went like with a fine, we went through every word of that script and, and, you know, that 
without even then I didn't hear for three weeks but <gasps> what were you when, talking about were you talking about like how do you make this more personal um, like how did you yeah um mostly just the part and yeah. the humor in the part in the fine line of the where that would sit and what that would entail and how far we could go with that and right um you know all the voiceovers she shot here you oh, know really I didn't know that that's interesting uh, yeah yeah so I mean we were doing well first of all we rehearsed for two weeks a zoom oh, week yeah. and oh. in the hayloft how rare is that yeah it's so, so rare a huge, yeah so a huge amount of groundwork was laid then nothing changed so I think in my process as an actor I love directors like I I need directors I like to I? be directed Me too. um and when I'm not directed you know I'm can be a bit at sea. So, and I really endow them um, maybe too much sometimes. Me too. Um, yeah. So, but I love that. And, and Sarah is a hands-on mm -hmm. actress director. And, and uh, I mean, she, uh, she was really giving me a lot of notes. She, she loves to really note a lot and oh. which is great. Um, but she wasn't noting the big <gasps> movie stars. Right. So, so I finally emailed her one night and said, you know, I'm a little bit confused now. I'm kind of losing a bit of my instinct because I'm I'm just feeling overloaded. Mm -hmm. And she went, oh, my God, just ignore everything I've ever said to you. Go back to the Zoom. Everything's great. And she said, just just ignore me. I got home and I just went I was in tears and I kind of went. Um, I was so nervous anyway, working yeah. with you know, that kind of star power and trying not to fangirl and trying to get over that. And then nice. I, the, I felt an enormous pressure. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I'm really happy I did that. But I you know, love that you did that. You know what? Honestly, sometimes I've, I've, there's three or four times in my career when I've put, when my back's been up against the wall and I've been so scared that the only thing I could do is ask for help. And, uh, and thank God, mm -hmm. because otherwise I, I think I wouldn't have gotten there and I would have just been dissatisfying her and I wanted to satisfy Sarah so much. So that is, that was um, yeah. a lesson for me, but not every di director wants to hear from you, you know, no. not every, yeah. you no. know, like, you know, I just love not, that. It's, it's taken me a long time to stand in my own voice and just be able to do that because I like you I'm so director dependent and love being noted and I, I need someone to lead me it's particularly if it's episodic because they may have access to other scenes that I don't know what they look like and I can't yeah. pretend that I'm all seeing all knowing that right. I, my performance is going to be you know seamlessly sewn in with others but I but that comes with me sort of having a reverence for directors, I think that's a bit too much. And so sometimes I feel afraid to even say that. So oh, the yeah. fact that you were brave enough well, to yeah. address it. Well, you know what? I was allowed to, I had been given permission. Now, when I'm doing smaller parts or, you know, um, see, I came on to Handmaid's Tale and did an episode as a yeah. guest. I would be very quiet. I would be very, feeling yeah. very much wanting to know my place mm -hmm. it's very important that actors know their place yes. in a show and not right. overstep that boundary and right. that's a hard one to learn I've yeah, seen I'm it background happen. and I'm just wondering what my name would be that kind yeah. of stuff yeah. <laughs> exactly. I learned that lesson a couple of times <laughs> boy yeah yeah so there was an actor I worked with in New York or somewhere and he said he was on a Seinfeld and he he made a suggestion Awesome. And Stein and Jerry Seinfeld turned around to him and went like yeah. this. It was like, okay. oh my gosh, no. I kind of love so, that story. You know, there's always that too, but I felt I could, yeah, in an email, yeah, you know, and that that, that she would listen to me. But there have been many times when I wouldn't do that. I was talking and to you know, our friend. Maybe as I oh, get yeah, older, go. as yeah, I get older, I get braver to do that stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Do you think that's shifted? Like you, you would, I feel like you've been bold since yes. the days of like, honest to goodness, you see this poster of this woman from I've heard the mermaid singing and not that that was like, like you're the peak of your career. Cause you've peaked so many times, <laughs> but that's not somebody that goes through life quietly. 
Well, no, but you know, that's a part and I'm not like that. I mean, I, I have operated from a place of terror for most of my career. So honestly, and even that part, like, you know, when I was first starting going down to LA, I was so, you know, in those, those noisy comedy rooms of sitcoms. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yes. Is there anything terrifying? I would just hide in a cubicle no. and I'm getting all these weirdo quirky, uh, you know, weird girl part, parts. And I thought <laughs> that must be what I'm doing. Hey, we, and then I come back I to mean, Canada. Yes. We're cut from the same cloth. And because yeah. I did um, the ginkgo tree that you originated. And I remember oh, like, yeah. right. It was a play in yeah. Vancouver. And I remember going, Sheila McCarthy originated this. I, I, I'm in, oh. even in that same room at all. I, I mean, I could have. Well, that's just bullshit. <laughs> that's <laughs> just, no, that's, I mean, people would say this same thing about both of you too I mean you know I'm the little girl in the ballet class in my underwear is showing who's not pretty like oh, the wrong that's, underwear on because yeah, it was so too low. that is that's a place of power too that's a place yeah. where you can you know uh it is a place of power that I have finally realized and being funny you know that's my go-to honestly on the set of women talking I was so quiet yeah I did not say like I was so shy and quiet really not myself and then I got out to Newfoundland afterwards and did this really cute show called Astrid and Lily and I was like ah, like and I thought where was that yeah yeah and maybe it was the park there was that but yes. on the circuit now with all the junket thing I'm myself again and yeah and people are surprised by it and I think oh that's interesting <laughs> yeah still in there Fear. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a, a couple uh, shots of you from I believe it is stepping out with uh, yeah. like Liza Minnelli and Dame Julie Walters and Jane Krakowski. I, I want to know, just to switch gears for a second, and if you could tell me like the craziest thing that happened, because that even from this, like what happened on the set, because even from those steals, it looked very much in there in that, that room that you were being yourself, that you were alive. Well, that and was Poor little Andy, like she, she again, underdog, abused wife, um, taking tap dance lessons to gain some power in her life. And the most memorable moment for me was it was a day off for Liza Minnelli. And I had to, my husband exposes me in the, at the kitchen, in the kitchen. He says, you're tap dancing. Show me, show me. And it was this brutal scene where I have to tap dance and cry. And you know, you know, when you see those scripts and you go, oh God, the day's coming. Oh God, <laughs> oh God. she quivers, she bursts into tears. Oh God. I hate she bursts into tears. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to so, burst into tears right now. I should capture this. Oh my God. My audition. Listen, the day came and I'm going, okay, Sheila, don't get in your own way. You can do this and just you work on the text and listen to, to your abusive husband and the director. And we started to shoot. And every time the cameras rolled, this will kill you. Liza Minnelli poked her little face around the camera. She came in and she looked at me and she said, it's okay. What? And there is nothing that makes me cry more than an act of kindness ever. Yes. And you know, like when you're, you know, that's what makes you go not not anything else and no. so that i'll never like now to this day when i have those moments on camera she's right there those big brown yeah. eyes and that and she's telling me it's okay oh. and i'll never forget her isn't that great oh god that's that so awesome. beautiful that's so much more beautiful than any story i, I anticipated that you would tell <laughs> the gift that keeps well, on giving know, well, you know, it's that thing too, you know, all those, when you have to do those big scenes, it's always about not crying, right? It's always about, it's about don't cry, mm -hmm. don't cry, yeah. mm -hmm. don't cry. And when Liza did that to me with that, there was, yeah, no choice. So yeah, that was Is that like, moment. so one of those tricks you said, you like, you see Liza in those moments, but like, you just said like your career has been based on like fear and, and that you've used it to be powerful. Like, how did you make that flip? Like, did you, is it meditation? Are there pills? I just need to know. <laughs> it's just 
probably underneath it all is just blind ambition <laughs> to yeah to get it i, believe I that. mean yeah. underneath it all um you know, we've been sitting in those audiences where your name is not called when you were nominated and that disappointment. You can't pretend that you don't want that stuff. You do want it. We're all hungry for it. I, like when we got the Oscar best film thing for women talking, I was hiding in bed because I, Sarah had said to me for two weeks, it's not happening. It's not happening. And I was so bummed. Now you have to check in with yourself and go, mm. okay, what really matters here, Sheila? But you, you're not an, yes, there's the art and there's the working and there's the, there's all that. But, you know, I love all that. Mm -hmm. I love, I love that we got that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, when I went to the Cannes Film Festival with I've Heard the Mermaid Singing and came out on the Quasette in Cannes and people were shouting my character's name, I thrilled i was like <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what i wanted there was no like humble pie happening there you know what i mean yeah. so mm -hmm. it is that oh god I, you I know can, it's i i i can relate to that so much it's not really for for me it's not really for the the gen genuinely it's not really for the uh the acknowledgement of the award but if I'm being completely honest, it is to get dressed up and to go on a carpet and to have my picture yes. taken and to be seen. Oh Absolutely, it's I about the that. clothes, the clothes and the and the clothes and the I pictures. Love that. <laughs> yeah, God. truly. I know. Truly, I, I, I. It's so much fun because you're playing a part. Like yes. I know when I'm out there doing it, I'm playing this movie star, and I. I never, when I was a little girl and I used to play dress up, I used to dream of that. Well, that's what I'm doing. It's not real. Mm -hmm. And I know it will end and yes. I'll be back clean. I'll be back vacuuming dog hair in two seconds. Yes. And it's not real. So I, I enjoy it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it's, exactly. it's, um, no, it's, it's fun and it's, and it's a celebration. Are you and going to go to the... Are you going to the, to the SAG so, Awards? So we're going to the, we're going to, the, I'm flying on Sunday to the SAG Awards and then, and then to the Spirit Awards where yes, we've been are. honored with Robert Altman. And then I just got to you to the Canadian consulate because Zabe Shake is the yeah. consulate. Okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And then um, the Oscars were, none of the cast was invited to the ceremony, but we're all invited to the Vanity Fair party. Okay. <gasps> So that's even, that's even better. My brother and I are going. We'll just be, you know, looking at movie stars. I just scared my cat. Sheila McCarthy, I am so excited for you. <laughs> so funny. So great. You know, listen. And then, yeah. So, I mean, I was bummed not to be in the audience of the Oscars, but then I thought, but it was just, they said, Francis McDormand finally emailed us all last week and said, stay home in your pajamas, eating popcorn, only Dee Dee and Sarah going, there's no tickets, forget it. Mm -hmm. so because that's what I will be doing. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, I thought, okay. <laughs> but we, but the Vanity Fair is even better. What it's can so you tell better. me what's the thing? So you've got like this great, this great celebration. I think it is like, you do have to recognize it. We have to take the time and be like, I'm really enjoying this. And tomorrow I'm going to clean, clean the house. But is yeah. there something that you're like itching to do career wise or life wise that you, that you're, you'd oh, love that's, to do? that's from that. Actually, that's I, not I, even I, my question. It's from Alana Harkin, but Alana oh, was asking I, you, when you talk to Sheila. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is to get this any one of, I've got so many scripts that no one to get one of those projects yeah. off the ground that I feel bold enough and brave enough to have go public and have be criticized and have work on and get produced that would yeah. be my dream and mm. cast you off and, and, and then you would know, I mean I'm not putting you I don't want to put you on the spot but I know you've been directed by your daughter Mackenzie Don Donaldson yes. who was a guest on our firecracker department and I have to ask yes. you a like, what was that like? Because I know also oh. Amanda worked with Mackenzie on Snowpiercer yeah. and loved it. Right. Can you just tell me what it was um, like to be directed by your daughter, which I think is such an unique Like, First experience. of all, I got to see her every day, which was an anomaly. So that's brilliant. And she, we didn't, I mean, we didn't not tell people that, and occasionally she'd say mom and people would go. Um, <laughs> First of all, it was like this, you know, apocalyptic survivor, I'd toting a gun, Annie, get your gun part, like it was ridiculous. 
And, you know, it was huge, long days of, you know, um, shooting 12 pages. So it was great. She, I was so proud of her. She was really, she was good. She was really good. And I, I had done this other little movie called Little Black Dress that that she and I wrote together um, about finding a little black dress for her funeral. And, and I thought, oh, this is where she belongs. I think that she's a director. I mean, I think she could produce, but I think she's she was really good and strong. And she is her father's daughter, you know, she's tenacious oh. and and she knew what she wanted. She'd done a lot of work. And I was really, I'm really proud of her for, for it. Is now there she's any having a baby? Yes, I know. <laughs> it's very exciting. Are so, you excited? Yes, it's a bit unreal. I don't, yeah. I mean, I it's not, yeah, I am. I just it's not real to me yet. I think until I hold this little thing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, I do have um, a hygiene. For for uh, as far as your career going now and uh, the idea that you're off on this whirlwind award season tour, uh, which is very much a high, um, what what I may only kind of ask this, but like, what does success mean to you now after doing this several times? Because you have done this sort of press mm -hmm. tour awards circuit many times. And while we were just saying it's amazing. <laughs> Now yeah. reflecting back on all of it, what does success mean for you? Oh, it just, it's precious. And it, I feel, uh, I know this word is so overused, but I, at my age now, I feel grateful and I feel, mm. and I feel surprised actually. Oh, I like that. I'm surprised. And, um, you know, it, it, it actually gives me confidence to keep going and to, mm -hmm. to, to, to be hopeful. You know, yeah. to be hopeful that that there more things will come along and that, you know, I can keep doing what I do. And um, yeah, that's that's really what mm -hmm. it says to me. And um, because success, success, you know, six, it, it, it just it's so ephemeral, like it's just it comes and it goes. And it's, um, you know, I think I probably should be stronger about using this success and using this platform. And, and, and I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I am reticent to do that. And I just wait for other people to, to do it for me. And I still relearn that lesson all the time, but um, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a great surprise to me right now. I, I feel that. like you've, and like, I, oh, yeah, I, I thank Sarah Polly, like, you know, for that, for, um, you know, she thought I was too, too young for the part. <laughs> and I said, well, my husband's grandchildren say, Sheila, you're quite young, but you're very old. So I told Sarah that. <laughs> that that's what sold her. <laughs> tell her to tell Brad that. Let Brad know. Yes. I feel yeah. like you have done, like, you have had pockets of groundbreaking for all of us gals in oh. this industry from, like, yeah. the early days Yes. as like a dancer into the work you've done in on stage and on screen to you know just like who, as you just talking right now like the the attitude you have about aging and I think it's just going to change all of our brains to thinking differently and it's like to watching you dance across the stage in one of those panels <laughs> for women talking like it's just reinventing I remember watching you and Deb doing like some CSA like red carpet chat and I'm like yes Yes, yes, oh, yes. I am here for She's whatever Sheila McCarthy is bringing. And oh, you know, honestly, I've lost so many people in my life too, and it just feels precious. Mm -hmm. You know, we th that that is in my heart too. You know that that who knows what yeah. life will bring? Who knows how long? Who knows how how you know? So uh, yeah, I think about well, Peter, your husband, just to on people yeah, who pass yeah. away. I think about him all the time. I saw mm -hmm. art that he and Colin Mockery did. Oh. And um, he was a great, great actor. He'd be, he, he, right now, someone said to me, what would Pete be thinking? He'd say, well, can you get your head through the door? You know. <laughs> <laughs> He's my great leveler too. Like he was a great yeah. actor. But he was always the one to go. Quite a you know, Hila, this could be. I just, like, uh. So uh, yeah, I mean, he'd be extremely proud, but uh, 
you know, he's, he's always there in the back of my head. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Well, you are, uh, I'm, I'm loving this award season in particular, and also just what's happening in the world of entertainment right now, particularly around women. Um, Michelle Yeoh getting the nomination and her having sort of a renaissance moment. And then Pamela Anderson, oddly enough, having her whole yeah. comeback. And I sure. feel like you're in your Sheila song. Oh, right Sheila songs. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I really take it do. From lips. <laughs> and it truly That's does great. give me something because I feel like, uh, uh, I, I feel like I'm starting to get into this place in my career where people are starting to sort of say that um, I, I've lived a full career and they're starting to put me in that category. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you're wrapping I feel like it you've up. done that. It's like, I'm not wrapping your rocking it up. chair, lady. And I, so I look at you so much of the reinvention and the being so effervescent and dynamic and constantly pe keep people guessing. And so, suffice it to say, you are, have been an inspiration to me. And then after this conversation have really helped genuinely me have little gold nuggets to use forward and moving forward in my life and in this career. So thank you. You know, it, just to add to that, to, to say to that, People, I've been asked this so many times. Were you always worried about being typecast as the quirky best friend the, with the heart of gold that doesn't get the guy? And I went, bring it on. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't bring it on. Like, work is work and yeah. do everything. You know, I'm that person. You know, uh, um, it's not like we can pick and choose. It's not like I can pick and choose. I, I can't pick and choose a lot. Yeah. And they come to you for a reason, yeah. right? Like, why don't yeah. we just go? Yeah. Thank you. Let me learn from that one and, and let me go. Say well, it. before <laughs> before we wrap it up, we do do a series of uh, 10 questions, the most hard hitting questions. And if you get them wrong, we turn the camera off and then we there's, delete your episode. There's no pressure. <laughs> it's the 10 <laughs> blazing questions and we're coming at you. Okay. All right, Amanda, off you go. Oh, okay. Here we go. What is your least favorite word? No. Oh, what it. do you want to be reincarnated as? A bird. Oh, I love, love this. Uh, who would you love to work with? Um, who would I love to work with? Um, Keely Hawes. Do you know her? I don't know her. She played the body. She was the lead in the bodyguard. I was just watching her last night in a new British series. Keely <gasps> has. Yes, I, I do. Mind. Yes, I wonderful. do. She plays wonderful. this incredibly fucked up cop in in uh, uh, Line of Duty. She's just an incredible. Um, Keely has or Nicola Walker. Sorry, can I have two? Oh, yeah, Nicola yes. Walker. Yeah. Who's Nick? I don't know who Nicola Walker is. You're gonna have to help me. Okay. The split. Watch the split. Okay. Three sisters. Great. Incredible. Love it. Um, next question is three words to describe your life right now. My what to describe my what your life. Oh, um, always in motion. Mm. Good job. You got that. Nice. Uh, one thing that turns you on creatively. Um, laughing on set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the most recent song that's moved you. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, oh, real song. It's, it's always, um, it's always Moon River. So oh, yeah. Oh, anybody yeah. who I sings, it. I'm sorry, I can't think of anything that new, but reinvented Moon River. You got it right. I love it. Uh, do you ever Google yourself? Yes or no? Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Best, <laughs> yes. Best advice. Best advice you've ever, ever gotten. Oh, um, get your steps. Oh, Ooh. best advice I've ever gotten or given. Yeah. Gotten. Gotten. Oh, best advice I've ever gotten. Um, uh, I think it would be Sally Fields. Reinvent yourself. Yeah. Every yeah. Time. We got Love two it. for one there because we got get your steps in there too. Bruce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. finally, other than loved ones and friends and family, what would you give it all up for? Oh, wow! What would I give it up for? I guess um, eternity. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. 
Love well, it. this is awesome. We have like one last little thing that we like to do, which is um, put a light on somebody else that's creating something great. Do you have somebody in your life or something that you've witnessed? I hear the the two people that you said you'd like to work with, but who's somebody mm-hmm. that you'd like to put a little light on? Um, I will. Okay, let me think about this. Um, I'll put a light on my daughter, Mackenzie Donaldson. Mm-hmm. who has, you know, 17 projects in her back pocket right. that she really doesn't like to, to discuss with her mother, but I know that she works extremely hard all day long, every day to get these off the ground. So God willing, that's who I would shine a light on. Beautiful. Naomi? N- Naomi? Oh yeah. Um, mine would be, I love that we have these moments. Um, you know what? Danny Kind is really rocking my world right now. She finished her, she just got nominated for a CSA and she finished um, her work on working moms and she's directing, like she's just Mm -hmm. kicking up and she's not like taking directing as like, I might direct. She's actually working at it, classes and making it happen. She really inspires me. Uh, My shout out for today is uh, the lovely actress, Natalie Brown. She also received a Canadian Screen Award nomination this morning. And she's the most humble, selfless, honest, person with the the most amount of integrity who is also workshopping and developing a script they have a treatment you know about it and they're you know starting to go around and and really turn this into something that's going to be developed shortly and so all for women who do it all yeah yep 100%. 100%. I really can't thank you enough, Sheila. This has been oh, so great. Oh my God, this I has feel been so much fun for so me. Lovely. It's great. Oh no, yeah. it's just great. And Deb McGrath's coming over for tea right now. Oh. I know, I haven't seen her. For... And so that'll be, yeah, yeah. I just well, sit, sit in the park and wait for me. But oh, listen, God. you guys, you're an inspiration to me and Amanda, I like congratulations on your uh, nomination. So deserved. Like it's really great. And, 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 and this show, like providing this platform here in Canada. Thank you. It's so necessary. Thank Thank you you. for being our icon. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to follow you wherever you go. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks, Sheila. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. See you on the red carpets. Yes. (laughs) Bye. 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 I'm so excited. Uh, I almost fell over. I almost fainted when she said about the Oscars. I think she I've was, been on the verge of crying this whole interview. I've seen I'm that. So, I was going to ask you. I didn't like. I thought they her. were you tearing, okay? But I was like, okay? I don't know. I think she's really. I think because she's just been in my heart for so long, and mm-hmm. that to have this time to like let her know what she's she meant to us. So I don't know. I was like, am I? Is it morning eyes? Is it dry eyes? Or am I actually emotional? I think I'm a little emotional about it all. It's it's emotional morning eyes. It's both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know what you learned. From today i mean i think like i think the best advice i have ever heard and something that she said is to keep going you know when people come to you mm-hmm. with like oh this is tough and this is challenging and what sheila just said is just keep going like we we can't yeah. nobody's going to do your work for you nobody's going to take away your stress or your anxiety or anything like that you're just gonna have to put one foot in front of the other and keep going i learned uh a myriad of things and while she was speaking I wanted to type but I I didn't because I didn't want to miss it hey we Um, recorded it uh we did yeah yeah you can like follow it up and like you said this last time I don't think you you don't believe it okay Mm. yeah that's how this is gonna go I I learned to ask for help that's the thing that resonated with me the most is that having the just the chutzpah to email Sarah and say well you're not giving anyone else notes uh, and, and just owning it, owning how it made her feel instead of making an aggressive move. And also, um, what was the other thing? Just pretend the 11 year old <laughs> version of just like, don't make it so complicated. You mm-hmm. have it. We have training. We have 25 years of experience. Just pretend. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I loved it. I love I you. Know. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Amanda <laughs> Bruegel. Uh, what's going to be the rest of your day? You're going to just drink champagne and enjoy your like nominations for the CSA. No, I have a pitch and then I have to go help my boyfriend and no, no, but yes. But yes, a little bit of moment of celebration in a frock of some sort and then no frocks, no frocks, but uh, I love this. I love that we're doing this. I love that we're giving these and she's right. I love that we're giving women 
maybe we'll branch out to women uh, beyond women uh, at, a, at a later date. But I love that we're giving these wonderful icons that we have in this country a platform and a space to be able to just talk about themselves. Because yeah. as much as I'm interested in, you know, Meryl Streep, I'm more interested in Sheila McCarthy. I'm more interested in Wendy Crewson because they're mine. Yeah. Yeah. And we have Wendy Crewson coming up too. We do. So that was my segue. All right, uh, if you're going to go follow, congratulations, of course, goes without saying. Uh, if you want to follow Sheila McCarthy, go to at Sheila C. McCarthy on Instagram. And then while you're on the socials, go follow at Firecracker DEPT to find out about hashtag the Blaze Sessions. And if you need any information, firecrackerdepartment.com, you'll find everything you need. And, uh, you know, if you have any thoughts, any advice that, like any thoughts from this interview, throw them in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Right? Right. I love you so much. I love you too. Bye. Bye. The Blaze Session is hosted and produced by myself, Naomi Sneekas, and Amanda Bruegel. Jennifer Morose is our consulting producer and cheerleader extraordinaire. Pal Carranza is our communications manager and content creator, with support from Chelsea McKenzie and Morgan Walker. Original graphics by Vicki Briarbreer and Becca Buddygag. Anna Maroden is our firecracker of all trades with doing our YouTube artistic management, our newsletter, and also content creation. Jennifer Rowley is our amazing sound designer and basically editing wizard. Rebecca Gismani does our show notes and additional writing. Senda Fiati does our outreach and consultation management. Shrishti Jayaswal is our video editor. Music by Sophia Canali and Arthur Kaplan. Big, big thanks to the entire Firecracker Department Action Year team that keep this community going. That's Veronica Martin, Anita McFarlane, Pau Carranza, and Lisa Lafferty. For more information about the Blaze Session or the programs, workshops, panels that are offered through the Firecracker Department, go to firecrackerdepartment.com and follow us at Firecracker DEPT on all your platforms. If you enjoyed our episode today, leave a comment or maybe something one of our guests said really like sparked some inspiration. We'll share this episode with a friend. And if you didn't like the episode, you know what? Just keep it to yourself. No one likes a complainer. Now go on out there, take some creative action, and then share it with the Firecracker Department community. We'd love to hear what you're working on. Bye for now. Hi, this is Veronica Martin, head of Firecracker Mentorship. Thanks for listening to The Blaze Sessions.